Have you ever had something happen in your life and you just can't understand why? Philosophers and psychologists tell us that humanity is wired to ask the why question. I think it reflects the image of the one we're made in. We look for meaning and purpose, even in the most negative of circumstances. Typically we ask, God, why is this happening to me? Some people say you shouldn't even ask the why question. <laughs> You'll never get a good answer, so why even bother asking? And sometimes we quote Isaiah 55 verse 9. You may know that verse. It says, For as high as the heavens are from the earth, so are God's ways higher than my ways, and so are his thoughts higher than ours. And it's true. The ways of God, the ways of the universe are so complex and mysterious, and we will never understand it all. We don't see clearly and we'll never know all the details of why things happen in our lives, why bad things happen to good people. It's beyond our understanding. But the interesting thing about this verse, if you go back into the bigger picture, it's an oracle and it's spoken by the prophet Isaiah to the nation. And Isaiah was saying to the people that God's heart isn't just for them as a nation, but for all nations. And at the beginning of the passage, God says, listen to me, listen. My ways are higher than your ways. Your ways are limited. But if you listen to me, I'm going to show you a bigger perspective. I'm going to show you my ways. God was inviting them to think from his perspective, to see the world as God sees it. He wants us to understand his ways in the midst of complexity, in the midst of mystery. He invites us to come to him and ask, what is happening in my life? I think that's why I like the story of Paul so much. It's told in the book of 2 Corinthians. And Paul was praying to God to remove some suffering from his life. He describes it as a thorn in his flesh. Now, he doesn't exactly tell us what it was. Some people say it was an, his eye that wasn't working or perhaps even an ex-wife uh, because people of his stature among the Jews would normally be married. We don't know what it is. He uses metaphorical language. He says, it's like a thorn in my flesh. Clearly, it was something agonizing, something super, super painful. And he prayed, God, take it from me. And then God speaks to him and basically says, no, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. I'm going to leave it there because it's going to help you form your character because you may get proud and boastful over some of the revelations you're receiving. And actually, I can use you in a better, fuller way, in a fuller, godly way with the thorn. He gave Paul an answer to his mystery. Now, it wasn't exactly what Paul wanted to hear. But the beauty of this is what the Holy Spirit was doing. God was inviting Paul to see from his perspective, to see God's higher ways, to think God's greater thoughts. He may not have understood all the complexities behind it, you know, the issues of healing and suffering and evil. He didn't understand fully what was going on here. But he came to God and he said, speak to me. I want to listen to you. And I think it's a pattern for us that in the midst of our why questions, in the midst of our own personal thorns, when we don't know what's happening around us, when events are unexplainable and we don't understand what is happening, the call is to turn to God, to look to him, to listen to what God is saying. And as with the people of Israel, with Isaiah, listen to me, in, be invited up to know God's higher ways. I hope that's been a blessing to you. Thanks so much for tuning in today. For more on hearing God's voice and having your own God Conversations, go to godconversations.com.